While building this quail hutch, I had to make a number of changes. A lot of projects are like that. And it's good to be open to change. Don't think that just because your first plan doesn't work, that it's a mistake. Sometimes it's just a process of getting to something even better. So we have just picked up our quail hatching eggs. How many did we get? 18. 18, 18 eggs and it cost us, what about 20 bucks? Now it's not a bad investment for starting our quail flock. Yep. I haven't quite finished the quail hutch, but that shouldn't take too long. It'll take what, two and a half weeks to hatch them out. And, yep. and uh, you can follow us along as, as that happens. I'm a little worried about this hinge being a little stressed. When we open and close the door, unless you're real careful with it, it kind of wants to stretch it out and pull it a little bit. So what I need is a door stop. Just to be kind of cool about it, I got a uh, magnetic one that's also a little shock absorber. Should be pretty straightforward to put this on. I've already pieced in a little scrap two by four here to help facilitate the door stop. I've already got a uh, design modification for this chick brooder quail hutch. I knew that I wanted to have the opening between the two areas of the brooder to have a bit of a gap on the bottom so there'll be plenty of room for the pine shavings for the chicks. But that means we've got a significant drop off here too much for baby chickens or any kind of baby fowl to manage my first thought was well I'll just put a block in there a little ramp they can climb up and and get in there that may or may not have worked my fallback position was just to build a whole nother platform with a hardware cloth on it just at this level so they can just simply walk out and be on the flat terrain. And I think I'm just going to start with that idea. Rather than mess around with something that might not work. In the same vein, the chicks won't always need this tub with the chick warmer in here. So there will be times that this section over here will just be open. And it will also need to be raised up so the chicks can get in and out through the opening. All right, I'm back with the new platforms.
this one will remain in here permanently and uh, I've recessed it a bit because the doors will fit inside here so they'll just have to be you know right up against there speaking of the doors I've spent a little bit more time on those than a lot of this other structure I found at Habitat for Humanity Restore Habitat for Humanity Restore is kind of like a goodwill for building supplies and you can get incredible deals on a lot of different things you never know what you're gonna find when you go down there though in this case for the doors I'm using two by fours that have been fabricated out of plywood somebody must have had a project that they needed a bunch of these and they had extra so I got these for a song this is just the one of the little scraps that's left over basically wood expands and contracts along its grain along its natural grain and plywood is much more stable because each layer alternates the uh, direction of the grain so it never wants to expand or contract at all so theoretically these doors should be very stable to make it look nice I've gone ahead and painted them as well I will need to put the hardware cloth on before I install them I've built these things kind of like I would a picture frame with the 45 degree angles and some little thumbnail joins it took a little bit longer but I had plenty of material to work with and I'm not worried about uh, spending a little more time to make this this part of the hutch look nice Alright, I've got the doors clamped into place with the hinges. These shorter doors I think will be perfectly well served with just one hinge apiece. I might use two on the uh, other side where the, the doors are longer. This door is shorter because this will be for the full grown quail that are laying eggs. I'm going to put a ramp inside here so that the eggs will roll out and into an egg collection box. Just make it a lot easier for daily collection of eggs in the future. The 
the egg collection box itself will be designed to be tall enough to actually hold this closed and secure with its own lid. collection boxes will be glued and screwed together except of course for the lid which will go on with the hinge later
full disclosure, before I put these egg collection boxes on, I've taken off all of the screws and washers on the bottom here that would interfere with screwing this thing up nice and flat and flush. But the screws themselves and this wood will more than adequately hold these things flat and tight so that the hardware cloth isn't going anywhere. Thank you, Wendy.
the machine screws weren't long enough, so I'm drilling to be able to countersink them a little bit. this longer egg collection box. I've got a couple of special challenges. Because I was working with scrap material, I just had to use what I had available. And this plywood is considerably thinner than the other side. So I don't have a lot of meat in this width to screw the hinge into. Plus, because it's thinner, it had a little bit of a warp to it. Maybe, maybe not because it's thinner, but for whatever reason, it does have a little bit of warp to it. I don't know if you can tell, it kind of bows in a little bit. So to solve this problem, I'm going to put another piece of material on the outside here. This scrap is straight except for a bow in this direction. So what I'll do is I'll glue it onto here against the bow so that its natural bow will try and straighten out the other one. And it'll just be thicker to be able to get the hinge screwed on. Okay, so it might have helped a little bit, but it definitely didn't straighten the whole thing out. I've got a little more fine tuning to go.
probably close enough. The hinge is on and it works really well. I haven't put in all the screws yet. For some of these spaces here, I'm gonna use a longer screw than the ones that they came with. That way, I can not only be securing the hinge into the wood, this part of the wood, but I'll also be securing this wood directly into the plywood itself, just to give it a little extra uh, holding power so that it all stays together. Because this plywood is only a half inch versus the three quarters inch plywood that I was using on the other side, I'm gonna to have to shim it up with some washers so that it will take up the extra room where the thickness just wasn't there. Overall, I'd say definitely go with three quarter inch plywood. It makes it a lot easier. This is the first of the three ramps for the quail cages. It's kind of an unusual shape, so I'll explain the reason that it looks like it does. First of all, it has two main purposes. The ramp will allow quail eggs to roll down and into an egg collection box. Plus, this floor will serve as a second layer of protection, a layer of hardware cloth that I mentioned in the first part of this video. It's just good protection from predators to have the two layers of hardware cloth so raccoons can't reach in and, and get the uh, little quail. These two by fours were cut from a 10 foot piece that I got at Habitat for Humanity Restore. It was perfectly flat and straight, structurally sound. It was just dog-eared and ugly. But how pretty does it have to be for a bunch of quail to poop on it? Plus this sort of rounded edge might help a little bit when I go to screw the hardware cloth on. I can put them at a slight angle just like all these other pieces will be. The reason the ramp doesn't go all the way down to a point is because out on the quail coop where it's going to slip in and slide down into this, into this little cubby hole I've got two by fours such that this will actually be ground level when it's in there. And because I've got a two by four on this side, I had to put this two by two here to extend the ramp so that the floor would be all the way to the very edge for the quail. The two by four that's on this side We'll have to slide in at this angle. So I had to do kind of a tricky cut here just to uh, accommodate where that 2x4 is. All right, it's the next day again. These projects always take longer than I think they're going to. Especially this one. There just was a lot of fine tuning involved with this project. Before I attach the hardware cloth, I wanted to explain a couple of things. 
I've left this piece fairly long. I've got about 10 inches out here. That's so I can use this material and bend it down into and curl it around inside the egg collection box to basically create a little shock absorber spring for the eggs to roll against. I'm trying to figure out exactly the right angle so that the eggs will roll down but that they won't roll down so fast that they break when they get to the bottom it was kind of tricky. Hopefully this will work. Hardware cloth is basically wires welded together one on top of the other and it's very important that the hardware cloth for this application be oriented in the right direction. I want the wires on top that are going down. That way the eggs will roll down like on tracks rather than trying to bump along like a little stairway going down, if that makes sense. Plus, when I cut the hardware cloth, I made sure to leave one edge that I hadn't cut at all. That way it's not quite as pokey and sharp as these other edges. And I'm leaving this, I'm leaving that edge down at the bottom so it'll be less likely to scratch our fingers when we're in there getting the eggs all the time. This is just a little piece of plastic to make it easier to lift and put this ramp into place. I imagine a little length of electrical wire would work maybe even better. ready for the quail. Well I thought the chick brooder and quail hutch was ready for the quail but Wendy had a couple of modifications that she was a little concerned about. She'd like all of these doors to be able to stay open just in case she needs to get in and out and be in there for a little bit. So I'll just use some more of these adjustable bolt latches just the receiving end and secure it into place. Oops. Just like that. I'll be able to use the four posts for the other doors, but this one just needed a new a new post to screw to. These brackets I happen to have on hand extra extra stuff from when I was building the boy goat shelter. So why pass up an opportunity to make my structure even a little bit stronger? I have to admit, Wendy's idea of increasing the opening for the uh, chicks to move back and forth makes a whole lot of sense. This uh, workaround was just going to be a little weird having to juggle these things back and forth. Plus, uh, I guess it's not that big of a deal if a little bit of the uh, straw bedding spills out and falls through the, through the cracks. It all ends up in the compost anyways. It's pretty tight quarters in this little space. So sorry ahead of time if my power tools feel like they're getting a little close for comfort.
Now we're ready for the quail.